final part of the stream survey is the habitat assessment. And for that, you'll use this data sheet and you'll fill it out as a team. The habitat survey is simply to get an idea of what habitat is out there for the organisms living in the stream and what kind of limitations there are for a healthy stream. It'll give us a better perspective of any kind of impacts the organisms are facing. The first thing we look at are fish. Were there any fish observed when we got into the stream? When we were out doing our qualitative survey? Were there minnows and small fishes? Were there sunfish, catfish, or bats? Were there trout or sculpin? You'll simply just check those off, whatever you saw, as well as how many. 1 to 10, 11 to 50, 51 to 100. The second habitat characteristic you're looking at, were there any barriers to fish movement? And for that, you want to look as far upstream as you can see and as far downstream as you can see. Looking for things such as waterfalls, impoundments, a pond. Were there any culverts, especially hanging culverts, that might be hanging above the stream? Those are all barriers to fish movement and will affect the biological communities. So this is an example of what could be a fish barrier particularly for smaller organisms like darters, shiners, minnows, that might have a hard time getting up over these rocks. The third habitat characteristic you'll be looking at is the color of the stream. Was it clear? Was it oily? Oily can be petroleum waste, could be a bacterial sheen on top of the water. Is it tea colored? Tea color can come from the decomposition of leaf material, especially from pine trees or decaying oak leaves. Is it muddy? Is there a lot of sediment in the stream, especially after it rains? Or is the stream green, maybe from a lot of algae, which can be a sign of organic enrichment? When we're looking at water color, this will be an example of a slightly muddy stream. Recent rainfall happened, flushed sediment into the stream, and that looks a little dirty. It might not be quite muddy after a heavy rain, but I would still consider this muddy. And you might make a note on your habitat sheet that it was just slightly muddy, not too bad, but still not clear. The fourth habitat your characteristic you'll look at are leaf packs. Were they found within 10 feet of where you took the kick sample? Were they found within 50 feet? Or were they greater than 50 feet away? That will give us an indication of how abundant leaf material was in the stream and whether that's any indication of poor riparian conditions upstream. The fifth characteristic you look at is what is the stream bottom composed of? Is it gravel and cobblestone? Is it sand? Is it bedrock and boulders? Is it clay? Is it algae or woody debris? You just want to check the most common. And in western North Carolina, most of that is gravel or cobblestones or sand. And if you have any doubt, there's a note section on this sheet where you can clarify that. Here's an example of good gravel and cobblestone type habitat see these large rocks, cobble size, you can actually see a lot of the insects, in these case caddisflies, gravel coffin case caddisflies stuck to the rock. You'll find smaller pieces of gravel dispersed in between. You'll see some sediment here, but again you're checking the most predominant, in this case gravel and cobblestones. The sixth habitat characteristic you look at is the condition of the riparian buffer? Is it mostly trees and shrubs? Is it grasses and vines? Is it an eroding stream bank? Is it riprap or construction fill? Or is it exotic plants? Now the riparian buffer is that area of land that's right next to the stream. 
at the top of the stream bank. And a good riparian buffer contains tall, healthy trees, shrubs, some grasses and vines, a good mix of plant life. And what that does is it provides good shade for the stream. A lot of the streams in Western North Carolina are cold water, support darters, trout, mayflies, stoneflies, organisms that need cold water that's very well oxygenated. Along with the shade, help keep the streams cool. They also help keep the stream banks together, have deep root systems, and form the base of the food chain. Now in this riparian buffer, we see a lot of trees, shrubs, we see some exotic species, some multiflora rose in there. This is, uh, could be considered construction riprap. It's for the home that was built right there. But I'm looking at the predominant. Looking at trees, shrubs, that's what I would check. And definitely make note that there's exotic species here. There's construction material left. Here we see an example of an eroding stream bank where it's not very well protected by vegetation. We see grass with not very deep root system, not doing a good job holding the stream bank together. We do have some trees, but you see there's been some habitat modification that has affected the stream bank. And this is a significant source of sediment to our streams. And it's not only a sign of repairing condition, it's also a sign of the extent of impervious surfaces upstream. There's a road just above the hill here, and they've replaced the natural trees and shrubs with grass, which doesn't do a great job of providing shade for the stream. There's no inputs of leaf material. If there's a lot of impervious surfaces. You're going to get more storm water in the stream, and the stream's going to have more power to erode this stream bank. The seventh habitat characteristic you look at is the amount of litter or trash on the stream bank? Is there no trash? Is there trash in the water but not on the bank? Is there trash one foot above the stream bank? Is there trash one foot above the water surface? Or is there trash greater than one foot above the water surface? And then the last habitat characteristic you look at is the riffle sampling effort. This is the effort took by the kick net sampler to actually disrupt the substrate. Were the substrates extremely embedded, I mean buried by sand and sediment and very hard to move? Or were they only moderately embedded? Or were they not embedded at all and very loose, easy to move? This measure gives us an idea of the amount of sediment or stream bank erosion or landscape erosion happening upstream. And then at the end, once the group finishes those eight characteristics, any other notes you want to make, such as location of buildings, roads, other impervious surfaces upstream, any maybe dead animals, any other notes that you want to make. Volunteer monitoring programs, like the SMIE program, provide valuable knowledge protection of our watersheds. It's critical information that watershed organizations, community groups, public officials, and the volunteers can use to go out there and restore stream banks, protect headwaters, use for advocating better regulations to protect watersheds. Your volunteer work is helping to provide a lasting legacy for our children and grandchildren. So thank you for the time that you're donating to this SMIE program and evaluation of our streams.